Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender's Compositor for video editing. Uh, in our first session, we got an introduction to the compositor, uh, getting an understanding of what uh, makes up the workspace, and how to work with the nodes, because within the compositor, it is all about uh, adding nodes, uh, connecting nodes, and that is the way you work. In this session, we're going to talk a little bit about how to clean up the appearance of the nodes inside of your editor, and also some interesting and useful things to know about the viewer nodes. Uh, because really you need to have the viewer nodes set up so that you can see what you're doing. And there are a few more things to tell you about that that I didn't cover during the introduction. Okay, so before we get into all of that, I am going to give you a recap of what we talked about last time by going over the different nodes that we see on the screen. And the first thing I'm going to show you is a handy shortcut if you haven't seen it before because uh, it's a little bit hard to see everything uh, so tiny. So of course we have the expected method of zooming in by using the mouse wheel, which I can do here and it zooms in and out. There is also the handy uh, shortcut, which is holding down on shift and then pressing the letter B. When you do that, this is called the box zoom. We get these cursors and I can just click and drag uh, to make my selection and then that uh, will get all zoomed in for us. So starting with this one, here is our movie clip node. This is how we are feeding the editor uh, the video file that we want to work with. I'll pan down and you can see we have a mask node. This is how we are getting the mask that I had created in the movie clip editor so that we can apply it to the video. Both of these nodes feed into our set alpha node. Uh, and by doing so, that's how we can show just the ant within the video and not everything else. Up here, we have uh, an image node which I've set up to just generate a purple color. So that image node goes into our alpha over along with our set alpha uh, in this ordering so that the ant with the mask applied will be seen on top of our purple background. And finally to this alpha over the output socket of this node feeds into two things. The composite node, which is how we tell Blender this is the final thing that is going to get rendered. And then it's also connected to the viewer node, which is one of the big things we're going to be talking about today. And again, the viewer node is how you get to view and see what it is you're working on. All right, so let me hit the home button. So we can, oh, that's way too zoomed in. Okay, let's do another box zoom and go back to that. So the first thing to talk about is how you can free up a little bit of real estate inside of your editor. Because as you can see here, not all of these nodes are taking up the same amount of space. These two in particular are quite large. So the movie clip node is particularly large along with the image node. Let's zoom in on this one, and then we can talk a bit more about the, these features, which are these two things here. At the very top of this node, we have this arrow, and if you click on it, it just kind of minimizes into this uh, much smaller uh, node, and you can see it still has the output sockets visible, so to any one of these, you can click and start dragging to attach to the input socket of a, another node. Uh, and if you uh, want to restore it, all you have to do is just click on this arrow and it goes back to normal. The other thing that this has, and let me just uh, jump a frame or two so we can get this back. Uh, Within the movie clip node, we get a little preview of the input source. If you don't want to see that uh, because you're already seeing it using the viewer node or whatever reason, you can click on this circle in the top right 
and it just goes away. Uh, so it is a toggle. You can click it to restore it. I'm under the impression that it takes up a bit of resources to have that visible at all times. So I would click to hide that if I find that uh, Blender is a particularly slow. Uh, but I do like being able to see it. So normally I do keep it open. You'll notice that this particular button isn't uh, visible on all of the nodes that we have. Really, it looks like it's just the movie clip and the image nodes. And that's likely because these are the only nodes where that would make sense to have that. But the arrow is certainly visible on all of these. So I can minimize all of these different nodes. And uh, as with the movie clip node, the sockets remain visible. Uh, for nodes that have input and output sockets, you can see the inputs and output sockets are still visible. So there you go. That is the first thing I wanted to talk about, how you can uh, shrink these down and then you can adjust and play around the positioning of it so that uh, things look a little bit cleaner and however you like to see them. Next, let's talk about the viewer node, which is all the way over here right now. What we talked about in our first session is that uh, it's by connecting it to a node, that's how you can see something in the background of the editor. Uh, and you can either uh, click and drag to make that connection, or you can use the handy shortcut of pressing Control Shift and then left clicking on any node. If there is more than one output socket, then it'll just cycle between them. Now, what I want to mention today is that you can have more than one viewer node. If you wanted to, you could add a viewer node for every single regular node that you have. Uh, let me show you how that would work. When you have more than one viewer node, then Blender will show you what is being seen by the last viewer node that you had clicked on. So let me add a few viewer nodes so you can get the idea. Uh, first, I'll just press Shift A to get the Add menu, and this is an output. I'll choose Viewer, and I will place it here. So again, you, you may have noticed that it just switched to black, our background, because this is now the active Viewer node, and it's not attached to anything. So now if I attach the image socket from that image node, then now we got purple. Now all I have to do is click on this viewer node and it will now show me what is coming out of this alpha over node. So it's as simple as that. And when you use the uh, shortcut of control shift left click, then it will be uh, connecting the latest viewer node that you had been uh, clicking on. So here we go. It's attaching this viewer node and not that one. Although that is, hmm, that's not working though. Hmm. Although I'm noticing that as I'm clicking on this with my control shift uh, left mouse button, it isn't toggling. I'm not sure if that's a bug. I'm sure though if I just do the manual click and drag, that will work fine. Yep, that works. Okay, so that might be a bit of a bug there. But if I click on anything else, it just seems to be okay. Well, let's try on this movie clip. That works. That works. Maybe when you have multiple viewer nodes attached to the same single node, then that's where there, there's a problem there. But really, why would you do that? Anyway, so let's move on. So we've talked about the viewer node having more than one. There is a different kind of viewer node that lets you see two different inputs. So this would be handy, for example, if you are applying some kind of color uh, effects and you wanted to see like a before and after. Let's add that now. It's called the split viewer. So again, it's in the output category. So over here is split viewer and I will place it down here. And let's connect two things. Let's first connect up the movie clip. And we'll put that as the first one. And then we will also connect, 
let's say the set alpha. So this is the movie clip with the mask applied. Okay, so those are connected, uh, but before we do anything else, I'm just going to shift some of these nodes around to make it a little bit more obvious and easy to figure out what we're looking at. So we've got our movie clip there. I'll bring that like this, push that back. It'll have the set alpha, and then I'll bring, as soon as I click on this, we'll, it'll show what we've got. And I'll drag this over here so we can see better. So let's zoom in a bit, and then what do we have? So we have our movie clip node connected to the first image input socket and then the set alpha connected to the second. And what we see in the background is that the movie clip is showing up on the right side and the set alpha is showing up on the left side. Over here, under this node tab, we can see we have some properties we can play with. So by default, it's showing X. That means it'll do a split and you'll see things on the left and right side. If we chose instead to go with Y, then it'll split uh, top and bottom. And let me shift this down so we can see that ant. Uh, the other thing too is the factor, which if you click and, and type in a value or click and drag, it'll change how much of one versus the other you get to see. So here at 68%. So now we can see that the top part, that's the movie. And then over here, we can see the movie with the mask applied. So that's one way where you can see uh, two different nodes at the same time, and in this case, in the background, which can certainly be handy depending on, on what you're doing. Uh, what I prefer to do, though, is have the output of two different nodes showing up in totally different spaces. It's easier for me to see it that way. So the final thing to talk about today is how you can adjust your workspace so that what you're going to see is the output of two different nodes in two different regions on your screen. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make use of the space on the right hand side here. We have two editors here that we're not using. Here's the outliner, which I've mentioned before I have never used for video editing. And down here is the properties, which certainly you'd want to use initially if you need to, to set up uh, your dimensions, your frame range. And if you're rendering directly from here instead of bringing it into the video sequence editor, then for sure you'd also want to set up the output as a video file. But once you're done with that, you can repurpose this screen space here. So before we do that, let's talk about what we're going to do. Uh, remember before I had said that the composite is really just for your final output. And then the viewer would be to let you see what you're doing. You can actually use the composite as sort of like a preview of what it is you're, you're working on. So with this approach, we're going to make use of the composite and the viewer to give us that before and after view. So we'll attach the composite to one node, we'll attach the viewer to a different node, and then we'll make use of a new editor called the image editor to be able to see the outputs of both of those. The only thing to remember with this is that once you're done all of your work, you have to remember to reattach the composite to the true final output of your entire node workflow. Otherwise, you'll be pointing to something that you probably didn't want to render out. We will start by making sure that we have just what we need attached. So I've got the composite here. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I, I'm going to get rid of these other viewer nodes that I don't want because I don't want to confuse myself. So with this one selected, I will press X to delete. And same thing over here. I'm going to click on split viewer and delete that as well. Okay, so now we have just one viewer node and our composite node. And what do we want to do? Let's say that we want the composite to be attached to the movie clip. So we get to see the video file in its original state. And then uh, we will attach our viewer node to the alpha over, like that. 
And before I do anything else, I'm going to rearrange my nodes so that it looks a little bit better. Because that is how I roll. Okay, and I'm just gonna squeeze that one down. There we go. So it'll be something like this. Now, let's go ahead and adjust our workspace to make use of our connected composite and viewer nodes. So we're gonna start off by hovering over here and dragging this out because we are going to have the image over here. We're gonna to wanna to have some space for it. Now to this top region, we'll click on this button, the editor type, and we will select our new editor, image editor. And once that's done, let me, let me also bring this down so we can see a bit better. So now that we have that adjusted, we will click on this icon here that looks like a picture. Click on that and we will choose render result. So we don't see anything yet because it's going to show us the rendered results and we haven't rendered anything. But we can do that by going over to our render menu and choosing render image. Once we click on that, it should load. There we go. So now we see it. And in fact, um, it should continue to refresh if we move uh, frame to frame. So I'll just go ahead and click over here and see that. Yep, there it is. Now the ant is over there. And I'll just bring it back to 970 for now because I like that position. It's also a nice number. Okay, so there is our first editor set up. I was going to call it a view, but I don't want to call it a view because then that we might be talk, thinking about the viewer node, which is next. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. We will click on this button, editor type, and we will again choose image editor. And once we have switched over, now we again click on this image button, and this time we choose viewer node. And there we have it. This is the view. And I will press the home button and it's super tiny. So that's one thing that we still need to work out. Let's try to maximize the area that we have here. Because at this point, we now have two images and we, we definitely want to maximize that space because really that's kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna zoom in over here uh, and it looks like, just judging by the amount of white space I have along the top and bottom and the sides, seems like I could move this a little bit over some more and then zoom in a little bit more and get the most out of it. That looks about right. So now I'll just zoom in over here and there we go. This is how we can have a stacked view of what we're doing. And now it doesn't matter about how messy this is uh, because we don't actually need to see it over here anymore. You know, we could, we still can. And I believe it was pressing Alt Home here to get that uh, zoomed properly to be able to fit it. Again, you could go to the view tab here and click fit. That would give that zoom properly uh, zoomed view as well. But the good thing about having this is that now the backdrop is more of uh, an additional convenience. You could have it, uh, you could not. Now that we have this set up, we can click this button so that we have a nice clean looking area here to work with and really it's up to you. So uh, this setup is how um, I've been working lately. I find it's uh, really handy to have these separate views uh, readily available. And of course you can zoom in as you please. I can zoom in and, and pan if I wanted to. And uh, again, with this image editor, I can use the same Shift B to do a box zoom. And I find it very convenient. And uh, hopefully you do too. Uh, hopefully you'll find uh, at least one thing uh, useful here that I've talked about today because uh, that's it. That is it for today's session. So I hope you did like that. If you did, please do give it a like and consider subscribing so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.